Hey, welcome to Hannity on this busy, news-breaking Friday night. We're on the road. We will be in Houston, Texas, Beaumont, Texas tomorrow. We'll have more on that in a minute. As we speak tonight, a caravan of over 4,000 migrants from Central America, they are fast approaching America's southern border, all because the Democratic Party refuses to secure our borders, even after the president offered a great deal, what they wanted, a deal on Dreamers. Now, this is what the Democratic Party wants. Open borders, eliminate ICE, and you, the American people, end up paying for the health care costs, educational costs, and criminal justice costs. We already pay billions and billions every single year. Now, just 18 short days, you, we, the people, you will have the power to once again shock the world. And at this hour, Nancy Pelosi, she's measuring the drapes. Chuck Schumer is dreaming of power and the makeup of Congress. It weighs in the balance, and that includes the president's agenda. And as per usual, Democrats, they're using identity politics to gin up emotions, distract you, the voters, from the successes in the last two years. So coming up tonight, we're going to show you all the latest examples of far-left radical incivility, including one prominent Trump hater calling for a military coup. Not making that up. Plus, we have important updates on so many key races across America. So sit tight. Buckle up. It's time for our Friday night breaking news midterm edition of our opening monologue. All right, it's time to wake up, America. We start tonight with a crisis at our southern border. Thousands of Central American migrants, as we speak, are marching straight to our border. Now, tonight, according to reports, the U.S. and Mexico have reached an important agreement to intercept these migrants at Mexico's southern border with Central America. If any migrant evades this process, makes it into the United States, Mexico has allegedly agreed to allow those persons to be returned to Mexico. Now, still tonight, the president has promised to use the military if necessary and has told Mexico and Central America and these countries that there will be a price to pay if the caravan makes its way to our border. And, of course, we're dealing with all of this tonight as a direct result of one thing. The Democratic Party, Democratic politicians, they've all been saying they want sanctuary cities. California, a sanctuary state. They want open borders. Politically, they think this benefits them. They have steadfastly refused to fully fund the border wall, and Democratic politicians all across the country defy the will of you, we the people, and they refuse to enforce our laws. This is a big issue as it relates to our midterm elections in just 18 days. Instead, what they've been doing is aiding and abetting criminal illegal immigrants in some cases with their sanctuary city policies and sanctuary city state. And unless the laws are changed, which is Congress's job on immigration, and we can detain people and deport people entering the country illegally, not respecting our laws or sovereignty, this will be a never-ending problem for the country, which, by the way, is what the Democrats want. They've made political calculations. They think that gets them more voters. And in many ways, we're welcoming people to the country either illegally or legally. They don't make any distinction. They refused to even negotiate. The president offered a massive concession on what they say they care about the most, the so-called dreamers. But they could seem to care less about illegal immigration costs to every other American, we the taxpayers, an estimated $134 billion last year in health care, criminal justice, educational system, and other costs. Now, this is just anarchy, lawlessness, sanctuary cities, sanctuary states, eliminate ICE, open borders, and a refusal to even hand over criminal aliens to the federal government as the law requires. So tonight, 18 days before this important midterm election, now, you might want to ask yourself, which party's immigration policies do you support? Do you support the president's policies, the Republican policies, a big wall to secure our borders, also with a big door? That includes proper vetting of those that would be honored to get into this country. Or do you support the party of no due process, no presumption of innocence, the party of now anarchy, chaos, lawlessness, a party that is aiding and abetting illegal activity? And as we count down the days to November the 6th, House races all across this country tonight. Nobody can predict with certainty what will happen on Election Day in 18 days. They're very, very tight. And in moments, we will preview some of the races that will decide the balance of power in the House of Representatives and the Senate. But let me be very clear. Wherever you live, it doesn't matter. If you vote 
for a Democrat in any House district, you are really voting for Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, Gerald Nadler. And as Speaker, well, she would control the gavel, the agenda. She'll determine the fate of the Trump agenda. She will steer the Democrats' secret quest for impeachment of the president, but they're not telling anybody. Nancy Pelosi doesn't seem to care about the forgotten men and women in this country who are far better off two years later since Donald Trump's been elected. And if you're a victim of her quest for power, so be it. Take a look. I think that that we owe the American people to be there for them, for for their financial security, respecting the dignity and worth of every person in our country. And if there's some um, collateral damage for some others who do not share our view, well, so be it. You vote for a Democrat, you're voting for that. The same woman, remember, dumped Obamacare on us, and you got to pass the bill before you know what's in it. You keep your doctor plan, you pay less, no, we're all paying more. So without a doubt, she has a history of being radical and hyper-partisan, and we've got the tape to prove it. Take a look. In terms of the bonus that corporate America received versus the crumbs that they are giving to workers to kind of put the schmooze on is so pathetic. If you breathe air, drink water, eat food, take medicine, or in any other way interact uh, with the courts, this is a very bad decision. So what? They're going to say, if you give them bump stock, it's going to be a slippery slope? I certainly hope so. I say to the candidates, do whatever you have to do. Just win, baby. Since Trump has been elected, we have 4 million more jobs. We have 8 million fewer people on food stamps and in poverty. 400,000 manufacturing jobs, jobs who were told were never coming back. But Nancy Pelosi, Democrats, they don't seem to care about the jobs, the economy, home security, homeland security, securing our borders. They have no plan that they ever mention. Instead, for them, it's about vanquishing their humiliating loss in 2016 and preserving their precious Obamacare, not working for anybody, abolishing ICE, open borders. They want the tax cuts back. They want the crumbs, blocking originalist justices from the Supreme Court, getting rid of Donald Trump any way they can, impeach 45, impeach 45. But of course, don't tell the American people. Try and hide what their real seedy, self-serving agenda is about. Don't talk about immigration. Never. Don't talk about that. But as per usual, Democrats, they're not doing a very good job. Let's take a look. These moments, well, the truth slips out. Take a look. There's a difference in how some of our leadership talk about how we should handle all of this. They say, Maxine, please don't say impeachment anymore. And when they say that, I say impeachment, 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 impeachment. They say no, I say impeachment, impeachment, impeachment. I guess that's the agenda, except they're trying to hide it. That's manipulative. That's basically a way of lying to the American people. And it's so obvious. And by the way, all too predictable. They do this every two years, every four years. They could never win if they told you the truth about where they stand. And of course, the use of identity politics. You know, every Republican, every conservative, racist, sexist, misogynistic, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, dirty air, water, killed children, killed grandma. You've heard me say it so many times, and it's happening now right before your eyes. And now the left is even taking it a step further, a dangerous step further, and actually vilifying all political disagreements. And anyone who supports the president, watch out. And that includes, oh, they're all so beloved, Rosie O'Donnell, going on NBC News last night, calling for a military coup. I guess she's best friends with Alec Baldwin. Take a look. We're going to right this ship. We are going to right this ship. There's no way that he's going to prevail because he's evil. He's dark. It's the opposite of what America stands for. When he was elected, what I wrote on Twitter was we should impose martial law till we make sure that the Russians weren't involved in the final tallies of the votes. And Bob Mueller has indicted 13 Russians for election meddling. And people were like, martial law, what's wrong with you? You're a lunatic. You're... Well, he wants to send the military to the border, so. I want to send the military to the White House to get him. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anybody really surprised by all the incivility we've been seeing the last number of weeks? Now, this week alone, we reported on two separate incidents of violent assaults, two Republicans in Minnesota, two Republican candidates being punched, one a woman, another with serious head injuries. Then there's Senator Susan Collins, her staff. Repeatedly, they have been threatened. In one scary situation, a package is sent to Susan Collins' house purportedly containing the chemical ricin to poison her and her family. We're also learning that a Democratic operative arrested in Nevada for battery against a GOP campaign manager named Kristen Davidson. Earlier today, she detailed the assault on Fox and Friends. Let's take a look. He's very aggressive, shoving his phone uh, in our face, faces, yelling, screaming. Um, you know, chased us down the hallway, uh, really bumping into shoving staffers on the way. We uh, entered a private room, shut the door. This uh, gentleman pushed his way through the door. I got trapped between the door and the wall mm. and um, had this gentleman kind of put my arm behind my back um, and held on to it. This is how bad they want power back. And what agenda are they offering the American people? This is all unacceptable behavior. Republicans have been stalked, they have been harassed, they've been run out of restaurants with their spouses and their children, chased down in airports, and much, much more. Senator Ted Cruz has been a frequent subject of this nonstop harassment, including just this week. Again, remember he was thrown out of a restaurant with his wife Heidi. Take a look. Do you think that putting a sexual assaulter on the court is a victory for women? Thank you, sir. God bless you. So you believe in men assaulting women? That's what your vote passed today, Senator. Uh, I believe in due process. You believe in due process? Lots of women were out there talking about their stories. And you don't Do you believe in a man lying about his alcohol to, in front of the Senate and perjury? Do you believe in perjury? Thank you for expressing your First Amendment rights. And in Houston, Texas, where I will be tomorrow, a Ted Cruz supporter was the target of another particularly unhinged altercation. Take a look at this one. You know, I have about a hundred of these. I'm about yeah. to put more out. Cool. All right. Well, I'll feel better about them. I guess he's voting for the radical left winger so beloved by the media and Democratic elite, Beto. And speaking of which, in 18 days, Texas voters, they're going to have a clear choice between Senator Cruz, a constitutionalist, a proven conservative, and Beto O'Rourke, what, a longtime left wing candidate who once actually got a DUI, fled the scene of a car crash, lied about it after crashing into another car while being intoxicated and wasted. Now, Beto is joining his fellow Democrats. They're actually pushing for Trump's impeachment. Oh, Texas, I hope you're paying very close attention. You said in July that you would, as a member of the House right now, vote to impeach. Have you changed your mind? I haven't. To answer your question, I, I do think there's enough there for impeachment. And if asked, I, I, would, I would vote on it. And don't forget, who is he obliged to listen to? You have millions and millions of out-of-state dollars pouring into Texas to help Beto O'Rourke. So, Texas, do you really want someone with the same exact views as Maxine Waters and Peach 45 leading your state? And meanwhile, little Father West in Arizona, the race between war hero Martha McSally was on with us earlier this week and a bizarre far left radical activist named Kristen Cinema. Now this week we have shown you example after example of Cinema's disturbing past. In Arizona, Martha McSally, war hero, well, she's taking on Kristen Cinema, a woman with a very bizarre disturbing past. Back in 2010, Cinema actually called the state of Arizona. She wants their votes, the meth lab of democracy. She was also caught on tape multiple times calling Arizonans crazy. She wants your vote. And Cinema even made fun of her state for being famous, but only in a Lindsay Lohan kind of way. And it gets even worse. In 2003, she suggested it's just fine. It's OK for Americans to go fight for the Taliban. She also promoted events at Arizona State University featuring a far left radical lawyer who represented the blind sheikh. And by the way, Cinema also organized an anti-war rally while Martha McSally was fighting for her country with self-described, she invited witches to the rally. And this week, the RNC used Cinema's own words against her in this brand new ad. Take a look. Democrats, Greens, Independents, Anarchists, Socialists, Communists, whoever wants to come. 
they're all welcome tomorrow. I know that in talking with groups that are coming, I've said, think about how the police are going to react to what you wear and what you say. And whatever decision you make is your choice. Well, thankfully, McSally is currently surging in the polls, and for good reason. Meanwhile, in the great state of Tennessee, we have a shocking new poll showing Republican friend of the show, Marsha Blackburn, is actually down one point against Democratic challenger, former Governor Phil Bredesen. But remember, Bredesen was exposed this week as being a two-faced, lying, fraud, phony, liberal, pretending to be a moderate. He was campaigning under the, campaigning under the guise that he would support the Kavanaugh nomination, but his staff caught on camera by ProjectVeritas.com saying the exact opposite. Say one thing to get elected, but really represent your special interest friends. The New York Chuck Schumer way of voting in, in the Senate. Take a look. Because, I mean, he wouldn't really, right? What? Oh, for Kavanaugh? I don't think so. But I was so confused because I just can't believe that he would actually vote yes. Like, I oh, have he wouldn't. And, but you say he would. Politics. Which so, I don't know if that makes it worse or better. No, it makes it better, but it's still. But what's the, like, I don't understand what's to gain by saying yes. Moderate Republicans. A vote for Bredesen would be a vote against due process, a vote against truth and honesty, a vote against presumption of innocence. Coming up, we're going to have a preview of three close Senate races with candidates from Michigan, Missouri, and Indiana tonight. And let's not forget about where I am. Now we have in the state of Florida two very important races. Governor Rick Scott currently busy here leading recovery efforts in the panhandle after Hurricane Michael. Time and time again, Governor Rick Scott has successfully guided Florida through all of these natural disasters, all while molding his state into one of the most competitive business climates in the country. He's running for Senate against a Chuck Schumer reliable vote by the name of Bill Nelson, who frankly has been in Washington way too long. This is now the 76-year-old's 18th year on Capitol Hill. Time for Florida to send him home. And in the Florida race for governor, the choice is simple, obvious, and clear. You can vote for a Republican, Ron DeSantis, who is going to keep Florida on the cutting edge of innovation and economic success, a former Navy JAG officer and congressman, or a socialist mayor, who, by the way, is under investigation, named Andrew Gillum, who wants to raise business taxes by 40 percent. Let me warn Florida, Gillum will be a disaster for the state of Florida. Forty percent, you won't have any new business, and other business will be fleeing Florida. So let me be clear about your choices as it relates to this election. If you care about due process, if you care about the rule of law, constitution, if you care about a booming economy, your paycheck, your safety, your security, and securing our borders, you better get your ass to the polls. There's a lot at stake in 18 days. And as Rush Limbaugh told us yesterday, right here on this program, this is a fight for the foundations of our country and principles we hold near and dear. There's a lot at stake. Joining us now, Michigan Senate candidate John James, Missouri Senate candidate Josh Hawley, Indiana Senate candidate Mike Braun. Mike, we'll start with you. In Indiana, you're facing the added burden of a libertarian that is drawing, some, if, if they draw 2% of the vote, it's not against Joe Donnelly, it will be against you. So I would say to the people of Indiana, any vote for this third party candidate is basically a vote for Donnelly. You know, I, I think the way that's going to work is that we get closer to uh, election time. A lot of people are going to see that that vote might not count. And I think it's so clear between me and uh, the Senator Donnelly is that, uh, you know, he's been in line with Chuck Schumer from day one. He's got a record. It's easy to talk about all the things you uh, <coughs> described in other races hold true here. He takes his marching orders from Chuck. And really, when you vote for someone like uh, Donnelly, you're voting for Schumer. And the libertarian vote, I think, shares some of the principles of what we stand for. I think those will come home to roost because they want their vote to count. John James, um, I've been watching you. Uh, the first time I interviewed you, you were, you were way behind. But you've been able to close the race as people get to know you. I, I don't say this often because when I first interviewed you on my radio show, I even said to you, wow, this is the future of the Republican Party. Your background, your business, a state like Michigan that finally is beginning to see some economic revitalization under the policies of the president. And if you're there, how could you help him? 
That's right. And we can't let that slip. Not at all. Not for a second. And when you were talking about the, uh, the mob over the past uh, few weeks, past few years, it's absolutely essential that we wake up and recognize exactly what the Marxist progressives are trying to get us to do. Right now, conservative speech is considered violence, and uh, liberal violence is considered speech. It, it's an attack on what we hold dear and fundamental, and that message is getting out. Understanding that we're not fighting for left or right, we're fighting for red, white, and blue. And taking that message forward is something that's really, uh, really meaningful here. We just had a rally. We had RSVPs for 6,000 people, 4,000 folks showed up. Donald Trump Jr., Kid Rock, Ted Nugent, and 4,000 lovers of freedom in the state of Michigan right here who believe in taking our state forward, who believe in taking our nation forward. And I'm excited to bring my combat experience and my business experience to bear on the floor of the U.S. Senate. If you want to learn more, please go to johnjamesforsenate.com. Debbie Stabenow is well-funded, and we've closed the polls from double digits to single digits. And just today we reported that in one poll we're tied, another poll that I'm leading. But we need your help, we need your support to protect our constitutional republic. Well, we can, and think of what we could do to a great, a once great city like Detroit and revitalize it with your background, your expertise and experience. Josh, let me, let me bring you in in Missouri. Your opponent, Claire McCaskill, she is the, one of the most reliable Schumer votes in Washington. She's caught on tape saying, and her staff, admitting that they are purposely lying to the people of Missouri. And now she somehow is mad that she's exposed. Oh, we need a special investigation. No, if you talk on camera or you're caught on camera saying things that directly conflict with what you tell the people in your state, she got exposed. That's her problem. That's not anyone else's problem. Yeah, if I were her, I'd be concerned about the fact that uh, she's caught saying one thing in public and another thing in private. I mean, she's t caught talking about how she wants exactly. to take away the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens, and we already know. We just had a debate last night, Sean. She, she said that she's opposed to the wall. She's voted, voted against border security. Uh, she is uh, opposed to pro-Constitution judges, voted against Justice Kavanaugh, and is opposed to middle-class tax cuts. So there's the choice right there, somebody who's a party-line liberal or somebody who'll vote with Missouri. Yeah, well, these are three important races. Um, that is a very winnable seat. I wish you all the luck, all three of you. Thank you. Um, these Thank you. three states, Michigan, Missouri, Indiana, all winnable. Thank you all for being with us. Thank all right, when you. we come back, Thank the media you. continues to normalize and make excuses for the liberal mob we keep showing you every night. Tammy Bruce, Joe Concha, they're next as we continue Hannity on the Road. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Trace Gallagher, Saudi Arabia, acknowledging for the first time that Washington Post contributor Jamal Khashoggi was killed. The Saudis say the journalist, missing for more than two weeks, died after a physical altercation with several men inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. At least 18 men have been arrested as the investigation continues, and two high-ranking Saudi intelligence officials have reportedly been dismissed. Khashoggi's disappearance has drawn international scrutiny. President Trump saying tonight that he wants to speak with the Saudi crown prince before taking his next steps. He calls the arrest very important. Alaska Governor Bill Walker has suspended his reelection campaign. Earlier this week, his running mate, former Lieutenant Governor Byron Mallett, stepped down, citing inappropriate comments made to a woman. News breaks out. We'll break in. I'm Trace Gallagher. Now back to Hannity. Right, instead of calling out the angry left-wing mob that continues to ambush Republican figures in public, well, some members of the left-wing destroy Trump mainstream media, they continue to make excuses and normalize this behavior. Take a look. When he brought the mob word up again, I, I, call him, I called him out. And listen, like I don't want to be the word police, and that was not my intention, but I also believe in calling out talking points we cannot like these are one-off instances everyone what is ha the one-off instances of the yelling at the wives and whatnot those are one-off instances one-off instances instances plural seriously now this is the bizarre behavior that they're now normalizing and defending take a look we Abolish us! Abolish us! Why are you separating families? Why did you leave my husband alone? I'm not going to separate families. 
All right, joining us now with reaction, he is from The Hill, Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, Tammy Bruce. Tammy, first of all, one-off instances, that would be plural, uh, yeah, would. just to help them out. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a one-off instance. What we've right. had is many riots in a couple of American cities. Mm -hmm. We have had now two Minnesota Republican politicians punch, one injured severely, the other a woman. We see Pam Bondi, Sarah Sanders, Secretary Nielsen, Ted Cruz and his wife, Mitch McConnell, and Maxine Waters create a crowd. You know, they're not wanted nowhere, no more. And follow them to gas stations, department stores. This is not one off. That sounds like marching orders, and we're seeing the results of it. Yeah, exactly. And this is now their problem. They, they in one hand, want to deny what they've created, like saying, don't believe your lying eyes, right? We see what this is. We, we're past the days of the 70s and 80s where we're relying on one network to tell us what's happening. We have other options. We have Fox News. We have the Internet. We have our own neighborhoods. We can see that this is a mob. And that word is chosen for a reason. It's not a talking point. It's a fact. And, and this is now what is separating the dynamic here. On one hand, they want to deny it. On the other hand, they want to excuse it and normalize it. Uh, you also uh, should note, of course, the Susan Collins letter to her home uh, that was uh, said to be uh, threat, you know, laced with ricin. Uh, her husband noted, Sean, that they actually have protests in front of their Bangor, Maine home as well. So this is not normal. There's a lot of young people who think that this is what happens uh, with politics. It is not. This is not normal. It is, I believe, the ultimate meltdown of the left that where they cannot participate at all within a civil society and it is it is encouraged and endorsed by their very leadership you know I, I, joe first of all the idea that somebody says one-off instances then you got say, fake news cnn they're they're lecturing the media saying don't call it a mob you oh you can't use the mob word well i let people view it themselves they can decide we see what's happening yeah, it's called Nat Sound Up, Sean, or Natural Sound Up. You show pictures like you did in that montage of people being attacked. You mentioned Ted Cruz or Kristen Nielsen in situations where they're in public places. Let people at home decide whether that's a mob or not. You don't start banning words when you start screaming about how the First Amendment's being trampled on. And Simone Sanders, who you played in there in that particular uh, soundbite at the end, she should know better because we're only now, Sean, remember, 18 months removed from a Bernie Sanders supporter, and this has nothing to do with Bernie Sanders, no blame on him whatsoever, but a deranged person who decided to take matters into his own hands, go to a softball field in Virginia and start shooting up Republican lawmakers that nearly got Steve Scalise, number two in Congress, killed. So that rhetoric certainly has consequences. And instead, we see not just Maxine Waters, but Cory Booker or Eric Holder saying you have to get up in people's faces or kick people. This is the type of rhetoric that if it was the Tea Party, for instance, or any conservative urging this sort of thing, I have a feeling the media reaction would be decidedly different, Sean. If, if, could I add something, Sean, in oh, and, that and, we spent the yeah. Kavanaugh hearing listening to the left say that all women matter and all women should be you know, safe and, uh, we, we, you know, we need to protect women. And yet this very tactic of theirs targets women. So it's the same dynamic, these same people who have lied to the American people, uh, obviously for an extended period of time, but certainly during the Kavanaugh hearings, as they became the mob in the Senate, their own tactics now are targeting the wives of, of politicians, the women who support Donald Trump, female supporters of Donald Trump. So hey, Tammy, uh, it's turning, even worse turning the wheel. That. Thank you both. Thanks, A lot guys. more coming up this busy news breaking Friday night. Nellie Orr, a Fusion GPS contractor, wife of demoted DOJ official Bruce Orr. Well, she met with lawmakers behind closed doors today. We'll get a report. Congressman Mark Meadows was in that meeting. He joins us next, along with John Solomon, Sarah Carter. A lot to get to. We're glad you're with us. All right, so earlier today, Congress grilled Nellie Orr. Now, she is the Fusion GPS contractor who's working on the phony dossier, also married to the twice-demoted DOJ official Bruce Orr. Remember, Bruce Orr became the conduit for Christopher Steele, and, oh, they wanted to funnel phony information to the special counsel, Robert Mueller. 
And Nellie helped put together the anti-Trump dossier filled with Russian lies, propaganda, misinformation used in the campaign, used to secure FISA warrants. And Fox News has learned that Nellie Orr, well, took the spousal privilege. House Freedom Caucus Chairman Mark Meadows, he was in that meeting. He joins us now along with Fox News contributors. Sarah Carter, investigative reporter. Also investigative reporter from The Hill, John Solomon. Thank you all for being with us. Uh, spousal privilege. Well, at least she showed up because Glenn Simpson wouldn't show up. Rod Rosenstein, I hear, is now rescheduled for the 24th. Congressman, tell us uh, what you can tell us as it relates to this. Well, obviously, the details of that particular interview are not something that we're sharing publicly, but, but your lead-in is exactly right. Uh, we, we were trying to get to the connection between Fusion GPS and Glenn Simpson, uh, the ones who hired Christopher Steele and others to do the dossier, and ultimately, the go-between, uh, which was, in our opinion, at times, Nellie Orr to Bruce Orr at DOJ and then to the FBI. And so a lot of the, the communication, uh, she was actually a cooperative witness, but when it got down to the real details, she either didn't recall or they invoked a, a privilege that would uh, say that the intimate conversations between a husband and wife uh, could not be divulged and, and, uh, and certainly claim that privilege. So I don't uh, know that okay. we learned a whole lot. It was lot the new. dossier she worked on that Clinton paid for that was used to, well, propagandize the American people with lies before the election and then used later as a weapon to try and bring the president down. And of course, that was all part of the media leak strategy, the insurance policy to get the special counsel appointed. Sarah Carter, let me, let me go to you. You look at they are being uncooperative, not allowing people like, like our friend Mark Meadows here to do his job, which is oversight. They keep refusing to turn over documents. They lie in the name of national security, and they've been proven to lie. But when you get to the bottom of it all, it really, a lot is coming down to Bruce and Nellie Orr. She creates the dossier. He's spreading the narrative of the dossier. And we even have information proving that Christopher Steele's telling Bruce Orr to get it to his friends over at the special counsel, but none of it's verified. Well, absolutely, Sean. I mean, think about this. So you have Nellie Orr delivering information to her husband that he is holding on to. He is delivering that information to the FBI, apparently. And he's also being used as a back door to deliver information for Christopher Steele to the FBI after the FBI fires and basically dismisses Christopher Steele as a confidential informant when they were gathering information because he was leaking to the media. So how can Congress get to the bottom of any of this if Nellie Orr is refusing to talk about the conversations she had with her husband. These are not private conversations between a husband and wife. These are conversations between an employee of Fusion GPS and an official from the Department of Justice. And Congress should continue to demand answers mm -hmm. from her, just as they did from James Baker. And maybe the person to ask about a lot of these questions is going to be Rod Rosenstein next Wednesday. I mean, he really has to answer these questions. He gave an interview to the Wall Street Journal, but then refused to talk to Congressman Meadows and other amazing. lawmakers. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. It's like, well, I could talk to the media, but I don't to want to talk to you. Yeah. And, and, and I'll, I'll let you weigh in on this, John Solomon, but also you had a big breaking story yesterday that all, there's, you, you were able to discover all these junkets yeah. that DOJ, FBI guys were taking from special interests and it seems one of the biggest beneficiaries, even during his time working for Mueller, if my timeline is correct, would be Robert Mueller's pit bull, Andrew Weissman. Yeah, of course, he's trips. the guy that was overturned 9-0 in the Supreme Court, lost tens of thousands of jobs at Enron Accounting, put four innocent people in jail for a year, overturned by the Fifth Circuit. Really? He's taken junkets paid for by? Yep, uh, the ABA and, and uh, many of these different interests that had uh, cases pending before the United States government and the Justice Department. You had FBI agents at, uh, going out to a trip when Microsoft and Microsoft's fighting it out in the courts with the Justice Department. It was a pretty stark picture of, of a Justice Department that seems to be on the take with special interest, and nobody really knew about it. These reports were yeah. hidden, and I think it's an important thing. I was thinking as I was listening to Congressman Meadows and Sarah talk about what we learned today and yesterday, uh, if the Beatles were around today, I think they would have revamped their song and it would have been, we've got a ticket to hide. Everything the FBI and the DOJ is doing is hiding from the American public the truth of what went on in this Russia investigation. And somewhere that buck has to stop. And I think it starts Back. next week with Rod Rosenstein. 
Well, let me go back to Mark Meadows and Rod Rosenstein. Why aren't you going to be in the room, and is he going to be under oath as per usual standard practice, and it, will it be recorded as per usual standard practice? Well, I think and that's why are you there? I heard you may not be in the room. Well, right now, the deal that's being negotiated right now would exclude a number of us that have been there. So here's the problem I have with that. One, that's not what our leadership had committed to Jim Jordan and I that they would do. But the bigger problem is, why should Rod Rosenstein get a different standard than everybody else? He wants to go into a classified setting. He wants to go into a secret room so that nobody can hear his testimony on a transcribed interview. I think that we need to continue to make sure that he comes. I think we ought to compel him to come. And if he won't come voluntarily, the way that every other witness has, you know, the time for a subpoena is now. I couldn't well, agree we more. We need to release the FISA, unclass declassify those, unredacted, the gang of aid information, the 302s. I hope they're coming. The president said they will be. Do, you, do we all agree on that? I agree. I do. I agree. Yep. Mm. Oh, John, all right. Oh, yep. Thank I'm you in. all. Uh, we're going to be watching that closely next week. All right, when we come back, Democrats continue to refuse to secure the border. We have 4,000 people, a caravan headed to our border. The president is having none of this. Geraldo Rivera, Dan Bongino, they're coming up next. Strip. America's News Headquarters, I'm Trace Gallagher. Saudi Arabia now admitting that journalist Jamal Khashoggi was killed in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. The kingdom claims he was killed in a fist fight in the consulate and says that 18 suspects are now in custody. This is a major about face for the Saudi kingdom, which had previously rejected accusations that the journalist had been killed. President Trump says he finds the Saudis' explanation for Khashoggi's death to be credible and that he'll work with Congress to formulate an official U.S. U.S. response to the admission. Meantime, President Trump in Mesa, Arizona this evening. This is a live look hosting a Make America Great Again rally at Mesa Phoenix International Airport. Stay tuned to Fox News for highlights of the rally. Again, I'm Trace Gallagher. Now back to Sean Hannity. So just this morning, Fox News' Griff Jenkins, he was embedded with Border Patrol agents, and during Fox & Friends, he captured dramatic footage of officers catching alleged illegal immigrants crossing the Mexican border. Of course, we're w watching very closely 4,000 migrants trying to make their way to our southern border. Take a look. Since I spoke to you last, we've made more arrests. The infiltration across this border continues. We've gone deep into the brush. Another group uh, of individuals. Now, you're looking at three guys that we came deep into this brush that they had located and found these three individuals. One, they're all in their 20s. One man is uh, from Honduras. Uh, two are from, uh, uh, I'm sorry, one's from Guatemala. Two are from El Salvador, I believe. All right, here with Reaction, author of the bestseller, The Geraldo Show, Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera, and NRA TV contributor, former Secret Service agent, also a bestseller himself, a uh, selling author himself, Dan Bongino, is with us. Geraldo, the president's done everything he can do, I think, and you even agree. He said, we'll give you the dreamers. Democrats never wanted a deal. We got a caravan of 4,000 people. Geraldo, we assume Mexico will do their job, but if they don't, then the president's going to be forced to put our military on the border. The answer is the wall. You said you would support it. Why, won't, why do the Democrats refuse to negotiate? And why are they hearing from John Podesta in a, a report, don't talk about immigration, it's a losing issue, so act like it doesn't exist? I, I think Democrats are in a jam on immigration because Barack Obama's policy wasn't that different from Donald Trump's. Barack Obama was called the deporter in chief. He was just as harsh on those who are here without proper documentation as President Trump uh, purportedly is. I think there are several things here, Sean, that have to be pointed out that is good news. And I appreciate Griff Jenkins' uh, dramatic reporting from the southern border. But in Mexico's southern border, go uh, 1,100 miles to the south, because of Donald Trump's 
personal negotiations with uh, Peña Nieto, the current president, and Obrador, the incoming Mexican president, the Mexican government has now resolved to help us with this problem. They've moved two plane loads of federales to Mexico's southern border with Guatemala, and the Mexicans now are stopping that caravan at their southern border. That's what you need. You need creative approaches, and you need the compromise, Sean, that you and I have hammered out. Let's build the wall. Elections have consequences. Donald Trump has has been supported by enough of the voters in the states with the electoral uh, uh, college uh, vote that counts that he deserves to get his wall. On the other hand, for Democratic support, we should cut the dreamers slack and give them a green card and a path to citizenship. He offered wall the deal. Plus even dreamers, talk to that's a compromise that you and I can live with. All right. When you look at what the Democrats want, though, I, the Democratic cal calculation to me, Dan Bongino, is they think this is a, a generation or generations of votes for them. So they won't even negotiate anything. Um, not good for our country, not good for the opioid crisis, not good for human trafficking. But we literally have sanctuary cities, now sanctuary states, and zero cooperation. Why? Why are they steadfastly against any protection of our borders? Sean, you will get no compromise from the Democrats who have been entirely unreasonable and ridiculous on immigration for the last 20 years now. But you just summarized nicely the reason why, and I want everybody to hear this and understand this. This is not about compassion. It's not about immigrants. It's not taking care of immigrants for the Democrats. This is about summarize nicely the reason why, and I want everybody to hear this and understand this. This is not about compassion. It's not about immigrants. It's not taking care of immigrants for the Democrats. This is about demographic destiny. They believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe Hispanic voters or immigrants vote like robots like the Democrats want you to believe they do. These are people just like anyone else who vote on issues. To them, it's about power and votes. And I can prove it to you, Sean. They have been offered deals in the past which delay paths to citizenship and vote voting rights, and the Democrats don't even want to hear it. They have, this has nothing to do with compassion. This is all about power to them. Geraldo? In terms of demographic reality, let me just say this. Ronald Reagan said of Latinos, they are Republicans even though they may not know it yet. They're very entrepreneurial. Look where Dan Bongino, our friend and colleague, is in South Florida right now and where you are right now. Look at what the Cuban Americans have done. Entrepreneurs creating businesses, being Republican in many ways. You can, George W. Bush, 44 percent of the Hispanic vote. It's 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 bad for us to let the Democrats President have Trump their way. Done, Let's reach out. Tr President Trump Lowest deserves a second look ever by his 14 staff. states. African and let me Americans, just say to Hispanic Governor Rick Americans, Scott, Asian Americans, women in the workplace. To Governor Last Rick word, Scott, we give you thanks for your health in Puerto Rico during the hurricane. Sean, we have to what treat Hispanic voters and immigrants like people. They don't like chaos. They like security, too. The Democrats have grossly misinterpreted their position on this. They're going to lose. All right. Thank you both for being with us. All right. When we come back, I am headed to Texas tomorrow. I'll be with Senator Ted.